right, Sunday afternoon. A little gloomy outside today. Raining a little bit. On my way home from the gym about an hour and a half ago, stopped at the gas station, grab a couple things real quick. Really nice old lady in front of me buying a 12-pack of Bud Light. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she turns around, says, thank you for your service. I said, yes, ma'am, thank you. She said, uh, I'm going home to watch the Bears game today. I said, oh, that sounds great. She's like, uh, yeah, do you, you know, do you, do you watch football? I said, yeah, yeah, I watch football a little bit. She's like, well, who, you know, who's your team? Who are you watching today? I was like, I won't be watching any football today. And she kind of had this look, you know, she's like, well, it's Sunday. Today's the day for football. She's like, oh, no football today. So like, what are you, what are you going to do the rest of the day? You know, sweet old lady. And I said, well, we'll go home. And first thing I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to process some sales. And <laughs> she wasn't expecting that. Uh, so she just kind of said, oh, okay, well, you know, thank you for your sacrifice and, you know, have a nice day. So I am currently in my garage, in my home, and I'm doing just that. I just wanted to share this with you guys um, because our signed hardcover options for Objective Secure went live this week. And there's a few things to take away from this. Um, the first thing is, because it's connected to the book. You know, when I first decided to write Objective Secure back in 2020, it was the very beginning of the football season. Like I made the decision in July, and then come August is really where I started digging in and kind of getting into a rhythm. And I realized I was going to have to sacrifice a bunch of things, but certainly something substantial in order to buy myself some time and energy, more particularly the time. So I gave up football. In 2020, I gave up football. Sundays became one of the primary days that I would write um, rather than spending, you know, four or eight hours watching football. And, you know, this was difficult for a few reasons. One is I grew up watching and playing football since the time I was born. And actually the year before that, so in 2019 season, was the first time I got into fantasy. Fantasy football. My brother-in-law is big into it. He's like, yeah, give it a shot. I'm like, yeah, cool. And I loved it. It was, it was a great time. You know, it got me more interested in watching more football other than just the Pats. So I was into it. You know, I'm studying and I'm listening to, you know, fantasy football radio and all this stuff. I'm gathering stats. It was a good time. 2020 rolls around. I'm like, I'm going to write a book. Football's got to go. So not only was I giving up something that has been a huge part of my life on Sundays since I've entered this world, but it was also just that much more difficult because I had gotten into fantasy. But I knew I needed to give something up, something substantial in order to give myself the time I needed to write. So football left. And what's interesting about that is I really haven't picked it back up yet. I say yet because who knows, but you know, 2020 season, 21 season, and now we're into 2022. And, you know, football on Sundays just isn't something that I do anymore. Uh, yeah, you know, if I'm, if I'm on a, at a family event on a Sunday and there's a game on, I'll watch it because I enjoy it. Maybe I'll catch some highlights randomly, but I haven't come back to that yet. Uh, because what I do now with my Sundays, even though I'm no longer writing Objective Secure, I am spending it doing other things. I'm spending it doing other things that are more productive for me or that are just more meaningful to me, like spending time with my family. So today's really no different. Today's primary task is to process some of these sales. So you know, we went live with these signed hardcover copies and I had done some homework. I had done research, you know, and I did develop a strategy and set the conditions to be able to do this. I built some infrastructure, right? So, you know, I established the relationship with my, you know, down the street UPS to facilitate the drop shipping. 
I gathered the materials, which I'll show you here in a second, my right? boxes, tape, like packing supplies to be able to actually do this and, and get it to someone. I needed the books. I needed a place to work, like a workstation. So I built all that stuff and I made a bunch of mistakes. I ordered the wrong size boxes. Actually, I think twice until I got the right ones. I ordered the wrong size uh, bubble wrap. Uh, once I got the new ones just like two days ago. Um, so yes, there was a strategy in place. There was a plan in place, but it by no means was it perfect. Not even close to perfect. There were plenty of holes in it, but in order to identify the holes, I had to initiate movement. I had to get going. I had to start doing things. So while I appreciate, recognize, and message the value of doing research, conceptual thinking, learning, obtaining knowledge, putting things on paper, an operational approach, these things have value. However, if we stay there, if we get stuck there in this planning mode and develop this paralysis by analysis cycle, then the gr it's not going to matter. Because the plan will never, ever, ever be perfect. There will be deficiencies. There will be gaps. There will be mistakes that will be made regardless that we'll have to adjust on the way. So I'm literally going through that right now. Just, uh, just one of many examples in which you know I decided to do something, gave it a little bit of thought, put pen to paper, executed movement, and then realized how many errors I've made and will continue to make. So I'll show you guys what we're working with here. All right, so I'm in my garage, which you can obviously see. It's kind of primary function is that of a, of a training area. You know, nothing too fancy, but certainly enough to get in here and get some work done. And you get over kind of on this side. I basically split the garage in half here with this shelf. And this is kind of my, you know, my workshop with to be able to do this. So we got the books, uh, packing stuff. I got some collateral type material, some flyers, business cards. Uh, these are hot off the press, these stickers. You guys haven't seen these yet, huh? We got some of these little guys. Got some of the bigger ones. And I throw these in every order for the signed hot covers. Um, also, we got a little skeleton action with a Glock. This is one of my actual, my favorites. A little Spartan with the prosthetic leg. So everyone that orders a, a signed hardcover copy gets um, at least one of these. Here's the, uh, the bubble mailers I was telling you about. So they all get wrapped in this before they go into a box with some foam. So, you know, this table right here in front of you, this just gets collapsed down and gets put away. Once I'm done doing this work, that way I have, you know, a usable space to train. So, you know, come in here, set up my workstation and, you know, and get to work. And you can see here, I'll just show you one of the, it's one of the personalized signed hard covers that's going out to a Brandon for his 18th birthday. Pretty cool. Um, to be able to provide that to somebody right now, you can see this is what I'm doing today. This is 30, 30 orders that I'm going to process and then drop off a shipment tomorrow. And this is, uh, this is one day. <laughs> That's one day of, uh, of sales of product that's moved. And, you know, I really didn't have much of an expectation in terms of numbers. The reason why we decided to come to market with this product is just because of how often we slash I are asked for signed hard covers. So I recognized that we needed a system in place to be able to provide that to those that want it. 
but I really didn't have an expectation. Um, <laughs> and the second that it went live, uh, they started moving really, really fast. <laughs> they started moving really, really fast. I, uh, I had ordered 250 hardcover author copies that are here in front of me right now to have to be able to provide to those that wanted them the sign covers, the, the sign versions. And I'm just about out. So I've already put in another order for more. Um, it's a great problem to have. I'm learning now just how much time and energy it takes for me to process just a single one of these. Um, you know, the generic signed hardcover ones are pretty easy because I just sat down one night for like two hours and I just banged through a whole bunch of them. Those are, those are pretty, pretty simple. The personalized ones uh, take considerably more time and energy um, as they're supposed to. Like it's at a, it's at a, a, what I'd say a premium price point. You know, they're not cheap. Um, so if you want one at that cost, I owe it to that consumer to look at what's being asked of me, what type of message, who it's being sent to and for what reason and sit down and give them something unique and authentic. So each one of these right here, the personalized ones in this box, I think I have maybe 20 out of the 30 that I'm sending out, that I'm processing right now, 20 of them are personalized versions. Every one of them is different. You know, every one of them is different. And, you know, my current process to do that is I get the message, I open up Microsoft Word, I, I hammer down on the message that I want to put inside of it. It obviously helps me check for grammar and spelling. Uh, and then I go ahead and take that and I write it inside the book. So, you know, for each one of these, it's, it's, it's a commitment on my end, but that's what we owe our community and our customers is that level of product. So this is today's primary task. We're in here getting after it. Um, I just want to show you guys kind of what this looked like and some of the backstory behind what it has taken to get to where we are now. And, you know, also selfishly, I want to document this moment for myself and for my team. You know, uh, everyone's, most people are familiar with that, you know, the photograph um, of Amazon and Jeff Bezos when he's working in this like shitty office with, you know, Amazon written on like some printout computer paper in like maca on the wall. And he's just back there. It's all messy and it's crazy, you know, and it's him grinding away himself in some shithole room, just making it happen and, and fucking things up a bunch and making a lot of mistakes. And you look at obviously where Amazon is now. So uh, this is a similar moment for me and for us. Um, and I will go ahead and say that being a direct comparison to Jeff and Amazon, because that is the level of vision that me and my team have. It is that, it is that level, right? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that that's an unrelatable comparison, because that is where we're going. And although uh, I'm in a garage gym taping boxes together, the message is the exact same. All right, so thank you guys for your interest in uh, these two new products that we've brought out. Um, I'm literally in here myself sweating on a Sunday to box up these things, make sure that they're ready for delivery and things get to where they need to go. I'm doing that here myself. Uh, there's no team behind me. You know, my youngest son is going to wake up for a nap here in probably the next 10 minutes. So I will pause what I'm doing here and go, you know, spend that time with him. But this is what this looks like. This is what this looks like. Spend a little bit of time putting in some thoughts, some research, gather some materials, get a, get a kind of a plan together, execute begin movement, realize that there are gaps, continuously reprioritize throughout the day, priorities, focus, what needs to happen, where and when, um, and then put the work in. That's what this looks like. I just wanted to share this moment with you guys.
We'll talk soon.